Hello everyone and welcome to Dad and me love, love history. history. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. We could be the greatest team that the world has ever seen. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. Hey, if you're listening soon after the release of this episode, happy new year. Do you know, we received a special card on New Year's Eve, nothing to do with the podcast, but we thought you might be interested. If you follow us on social media, you, you may already know. Where was the card from, James? It was from people that um, helivacked me. Yeah, we went uh, to an island off Queensland, we live in Queensland, and uh, went to Hamilton Island for a few days just before Christmas, and on the second night there, in the middle of the night, James started vomiting and was really in a lot of pain, we ended up calling a doctor who ended up calling a helicopter and taking him to a hospital to have his appendix out. But not only that, on New Year's Eve, they, the helicopter rescue team, sent us a handwritten card saying um, how proud they were to help James and that they hope that he gets well soon. So that was really sweet of CQ Rescue, that's Central Queensland Rescue. Thank you very much. Anyway, today we're investigating Pigeons who were spies. Exploding rats. Deadly dogs. And bat bombs. And we'll be answering our episode title question, did any animals ever win a war? Yeah, so this week, we we always like to include history jokes where we can. And this week, as our show is all about animals, we're going to bless you with some animal jokes. What happens to a frog's car when it breaks down? I don't know. What does happen to a frog's car when it breaks down? It gets towed away. (laughs) To get started, James... Tell us about exploding rats. In World War II, dead rats were stuffed full of explosives and were scattered around factories at night by resistant fighters in places ruled by Nazi Germany. The plan was that German workers would scoop the dead rat up and throw it in the fire. Then explosion. That is cool. I don't think those dead rats won World War II, but they sure made a noble sacrifice for the cause. But I think pigeons did more to win a world war than rats. Homing pigeons would deliver messages. Forget Facebook Messenger. Messenger pigeons reached its peak during World War I. There were about 250,000 messenger pigeons used by Allied forces. Britain and its allies won the First World War. So can we say pigeons won a war? We can say pigeons helped win a war. And so did cats. As far back as the ancient Egyptians, cats were used on boats to help solve rat problems, which reduced damage to food supplies and stopped disease spreading. Don't forget the Black Death Plague spread because fleas were on rats, which travelled the world taking the plague with them. What do you give a sick bird? I don't know. What do you give a sick bird? Tweet mint. Tweet mint. <laughs> Dogs, as their sense of smell is so good, they could seek out and find soldiers and civilians, ordinary people, who were stuck, alone and needed help. That happened on the battlefields of the First World War. Search and rescue dogs would go onto the battlefield and find wounded men. The dogs carried with them water and medical supplies so they could help the men even when ambulances couldn't get to them. During the Second World War, dogs helped to find people trapped under buildings that had collapsed during bombing raids. Dogs were used in battles at least 2,000 years ago. The Romans bred their own war dogs. Most of those dogs were mainly used as watchdogs, but some were given spiky collars and armour and were trained to fight in battle with the Roman soldiers. What is a cat's favourite colour? I don't know. What is a cat's favourite colour? 
Purple. Purple. <laughs> the First World War broke out in 1914 and troops rode camels throughout the war in the desert fighting in North Africa and camels would transport injured soldiers across the desert by pulling them along on a type of sleigh. Also, camels would carry heavy guns and ammunition and other supplies, especially where trucks and cars couldn't get through the desert. The idea of animals carrying the heavy stuff during war continued into the Second World War when elephants were used to carry weapons and ammunition in Asia. Elephants were first used almost 2,500 years ago in India where the elephant cavalry, that means soldiers riding elephants, were used to charge at and through enemy foot soldiers. Elephants, which often wore armour, could trample the enemy, attack them with their tusks, which often had iron spikes attached to them, and even throw an enemy soldier with their elephant trunks. Some elephants carried a raised fighting platform on their backs for archers and spear throwers to aim down at their enemies on the ground. These ideas spread from India across Southeast Asia and to North Africa and even parts of Europe. In 331 BC, Alexander the Great fought against the war elephants of the Persian army. The elephants terrified Alexander's soldiers, but that didn't stop Alex from winning the battle. So actually, that's a case where animals, in this case elephants, lost the battle. Hmm. So, I know what would win a battle. What? Bat bombs, obviously. The idea came up in the United States near the end of the Second World War. Bat bombs could turn the flying mammals into flying bombs to drop on Japan. That was the idea. The bomb was made up of more than a thousand compartments in one bomb case. Each compartment contained a live bat. Attached to each bat was a small timed bomb that would explode into fire when detonated. So this bomb of a thousand bats, huge bomb, would drop out of an aeroplane and then halfway down a parachute would open so that the, the, the big bomb case would slowly come down to earth and then the bats would also be released, doors would open on the side as the bomb got close to earth, scattering the, the bats, they would go and roost in buildings all across the area, many kilometers away. Because in Japan, they have wooden building materials often, the bat bombs had the potential to set fire to and destroy a city. But despite the success of all the planning and testing, the project was not ready quickly enough and it was eventually abandoned to focus instead on, the, on developing a weapon with far greater power, the atomic bomb. That's another story. What about a battle bear? In World War II, Polish troops adopted a brown bear called Wojtek. The bear would drink two things, condensed milk and beer. Soon Wojtek had grown to more than 1.8 meters tall. He was made a soldier and given the rank of private and eventually he rose to the rank of corporal in the Polish army. In 1944, Wojtek was sent with his unit to Monte Cassino in Italy, where he helped carry crates of ammunition during one of the bloodiest battles of World War II. When the war finished, his unit was sent to a base near Edinburgh in Scotland, and Wojtek retired from the army and lived at Edinburgh Zoo. <laughs> why can't a leopard hide? I don't know, why can't a leopard hide? Because he's always spotted. <laughs> <laughs> Best one so far. So we've covered a lot of interesting history where animals 
fought in war. But were animals ever so important in the war that they truly won it? We had to investigate further, so here we go. Horses have played a greater role in warfare than any other animal. Yeah, archaeologists have found evidence horses were used in fighting as early as 5,000 years ago in Central Asia and Eastern Europe. One of the world's earliest war stories was written up in Homer's Iliad from around 800 BC, which describes the heroes of the Trojan War driving to battle in horse-drawn chariots. And then there was the trick of the wooden Trojan horse, which Greek soldiers hid inside. The dry wooden horse was left outside their enemy's city called Troy. The people of Troy were curious about the Trojan horse, so they wheeled the horse inside the gate in the city walls. Then at night, the Greek soldiers inside jumped out and took over Troy. Yeah, horses and mounted cavalry, that's soldiers on horseback, have played a major part in almost every major war through to World War I and even beyond. For example, horses were important to Roman conquests, see episode 3 about that. And when the Muslim Moors conquered Spain, see episode 33. In these examples, both sides usually had horses, so it's not easy to say the horses won the war. What did the dog say when he sat on the sandpaper? I don't know. What did the dog say when he sat on the sandpaper? Rough! <laughs> <laughs> We love history, baby! We love, we love history! Here's another one where animals lost the battle, and in this case lost a whole empire with it. At the Battle of Tondibi in West Africa in 1591, the defending army of the Songhai Empire opened battle with the charge of 1,000 stampeding cattle against the lines of Moroccan foot soldiers. But the Moroccans had guns, which scared the cattle. The animals turned around and stampeded back into the Songhai army, who lost the battle and then eventually lost control of their whole empire. Whoa, but we need an animal victory, not a defeat. Using animals seems to have uh, cost them the battle there and their empire. So we delved even deeper looking for battles or events in war where one side used a certain animal and where we could truly say that those animals saved the day. Here's what we found. Back to elephants. In 280 BC in North Africa, King Pyrrhus borrowed more than 20 African war elephants from the Egyptian king to attack Roman armies in southern Italy. The elephants helped to defeat the Romans in that battle, and again the next year. For that second battle, the Romans had trained special troops to attack the elephants with javelins. Pyrrhus only just won that battle, that second one against Rome, with huge losses among his own troops. So today, if you hear the term a Pyrrhic victory, and I expect your parents might know that, it means winning, but at a huge cost. For example, Manchester United just about managed to beat Portsmouth, but all of the Man U players were too injured to play in their next game. That would be a Pyrrhic victory. Because all the Portsmouth players injured them. Well, you've got to find one way to win. <laughs> just a joke, people. A few decades later, a bloke called Hannibal from North Africa also used elephants to attack the Romans. Hannibal led war elephants from Africa on boats to Spain, and then over land and over the Alps, Europe's biggest mountains, to attack Italy from the north. Those elephants helped Hannibal successfully raid Rome, even if he did retreat back to North Africa afterwards. So that's really cool. We are now finding out about animals who've won battles and won wars. But what I'm going to tell you about now is the beesness. The ancient Greeks used bees as tiny weapons of war. When Greeks were defending the town of Themyscira against the Romans in 72 BC, and that's a Greek town famous for its production of honey, by the way, 
The Greeks won by attacking the Romans by sending swarms of bees through the mine tunnels that had been dug beneath their walls. So the town was surrounded by Romans, the Greeks were on the inside, they had the beehives on the inside, and they knew they had a tunnel system under their city that went outside, and so they sent their bees down there. Bees won, Romans nil. Finally, here's the most deadly animal known to have won a battle for humans. Scorpions. The Roman army faced an enemy even worse than the bees when they surrounded their enemy at the city of Hatra in 198 BC. Yeah, Hatra is near Mosul in modern day Iraq. The defenders of Hetra had a special way of handling scorpions without hiding themselves. So they filled clay pots with dozens of stinging scorpions and threw them down on the attacking Romans. The insects fell into the Romans' eyes and on all the unprotected parts of their bodies, wrote Herodian of Syria. Digging in before they were noticed, they bit and stung the soldiers. The Romans eventually had to give up the siege of Hatra. Scorpions won, Romans nil. Yep, they gave up the siege of Hatra, so they lost that battle. What a win for the Scorpions! Forget the Romans, bees versus scorpions is the battle I'd like to see. So James, what animals do you think were most successful in war? The scorpions. Yeah, the scorpions, I mean, we've got that one example from history, but what an example. That was a clear 1-0 victory. Other than that, the bees were pretty useful, surprisingly useful. The stampeding cattle was a bit of an own goal, defeated the side that tried to use them. And I think we've got to give a big shout out to horses. Horses have been used in more wars than uh, any other type of animal. What time does a duck wake up? Um, one, two, three, four, crack o'clock. At the crack of dawn. At the crack of dawn. <laughs> how do rabbits travel? I don't know, how do rabbits travel? By aeroplanes. Of course they do. This is more of a um, riddle. A man rode his horse to town on Friday. The next day he rode back on Friday. How is this possible? So a man rode his horse to town on Friday and the next day he rode back on Friday. Listener, how do you think that's possible? Tell him, James. The horse's name was Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Here are six questions to see how well you were listening. Number one, what was the main task pigeons did during war? Number two, name different tasks that dogs did during wars. Number three, why were cats useful on naval ships? Number four, which type of animal has been in the most wars? Number five, name two animals that defeated Romans. And finally, number six, here's a tricky one. Can you explain what Pyrrhic victory means? Well, that's about it from Dan and me. Hey people, have you told your friends about this great podcast series yet? Share. Yeah, don't be selfish and please review us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Or tell us what you think on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Bye from now. From Dad and me. Love history. history. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. We could be the greatest team that the world has ever seen. Dad and me 
love a whole lot of history. When does a teacher carry bird seed? I don't know. When does a teacher carry bird seed? When there is a parent. Oh, sorry. When when there is a parrot teacher conference. A parrot teacher conference instead of a parent teacher conference. Are we not going to use that one? Definitely in the outtakes. Somebody's cutting their grass. Close the window. And when you said the bear would drink two things, condensed milk and beer, do you think that's both at the same time? No. No, that would be horrible. Bye from now. From Dad. And me. Love history. history. Can we just do that? Bye for now from Dad and me love history. Why? Because it was, it was a bit, sounded a bit like a computer. Bye for now from Dad and me love history from both of us. Bye from now. From Dad. And me. Love, love history. Um... Actually, okay, we'll do this now. Obviously, some breaks. That's black, I'm sorry. Okay. It's not, but I don't mind it.